Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on hiatal hernia or hiatus hernia. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about what this condition is, what causes it. We're also gonna talk about the signs and symptoms of a hiatal hernia, how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. So a hiatal hernia is a condition involving a herniation of part of the stomach through an opening in the diaphragm. So if you look at this image here, the esophagus travels through a hole in the diaphragm to join to the stomach. And that hole in the diaphragm is known as the esophageal hiatus. The diaphragm is a respiratory muscle, and there's a small hole where the esophagus travels through it to join to the stomach, and that is called the esophageal hiatus. And this is where we have herniation of the stomach through that hole, through the esophageal hiatus. This condition can be congenital, which means people can be born with it, or it can be an acquired condition that someone gets later on in their life. Now, what is the epidemiology of hiatal hernia? It is a very common condition. It is estimated to affect approximately 55 to 60% of individuals over the age of 50. So it is very common. Some of the risk factors for getting a hiatal hernia include the following. One is increasing age. So the reason is, is because as an individual ages, the muscles that surround this area begin to become weak and loose, allowing parts of the stomach to herniate through the esophageal hiatus. Another risk factor is increasing BMI or body mass index. So being obese, particularly more abdominal fat, can put pressure on the stomach, pushing part of the stomach up through the esophageal hiatus. And related to this is elevated intra-abdominal pressure. So one cause we just mentioned was increasing BMI that increases intra-abdominal pressure, but some other causes include chronic straining. You can think of chronic constipation or chronic issues with vomiting, anything that applies a lot of pressure inside the abdomen. This can essentially push part of the stomach through the esophageal hiatus, causing a hiatal hernia. Pregnancy is another cause as this increases intra-abdominal pressure. And then chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD can also lead to this as well. If there's lots of coughing, chronic cough, applying a lot of pressure continually and chronically can essentially herniate part of the stomach through that esophageal hiatus. And then smoking is also another risk factor for getting a hiatal hernia as well. Now there are four types of hiatal hernia we're gonna talk about here. The first is type one. This is also known as the sliding type. This is the most common type of hiatal hernia. So you can see in this image here, this is a type one or sliding type of hiatal hernia. This is where the first portion of the stomach herniates through the esophageal hiatus. And we see part of the stomach being pushed into the chest or the chest wall. And more specifically, it means that the gastroesophageal junction, so the gastroesophageal junction is where the esophagus meets the official part of the stomach, is noted here, gets displaced upwards toward the hiatus and up through the diaphragm. That is type 1. Type 2 is also known as a paraesophageal hiatal hernia. So this is where we get part of the stomach, this part here, gets plopped up. So there's not an upward displacement of the gastroesophageal junction. There's actually a part of the stomach that gets displaced upward. And parasophageal hiatal hernia means that there's a parallel migration of part of the stomach in relation to the esophagus. So there's part of the stomach that is in parallel to the esophagus that is a paraesophageal hiatal hernia or type 2. Type 3 is a mixture of type 1 and type 2. So we get part of this, but then also another part that pops up as well. So that's easy to remember. Type 3 is type 1 plus type 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3. And then type 4 is where the stomach and other internal organs migrate into the chest. So this is the most severe type. So as I mentioned before, type 1 is the most common, represents 95% of hiatal hernia cases. And then type 2 is the second most common, and then some of the other types make up the remaining percentages. Now that we know what a hiatal hernia is, let's talk about the clinical features. It's important to note that by far the vast majority of patients who have a hiatal hernia are asymptomatic. Symptoms only occur in less than 10% of patients. And when there are symptoms, they are symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. So the reason this is the case is because of the following. The 
esophagus, where it joins the stomach, there is the lower esophageal sphincter, or LES. This closes, ensuring that the acidic gastric contents do not reflux up into the esophagus. But if you have this portion of the esophagus and part of the stomach being pushed into the chest through the esophageal hiatus, we can have issues with lower esophageal sphincter functioning. So this can lead to weakness or relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter, leading to reflux of acidic gastric contents into the esophagus. So some symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease include heartburn, epigastric pain. Some other symptoms we can see with a hiatal hernia include postprandial fullness, so meaning that after you eat, you feel very, very full. Regurgitation of digested food oftentimes. So the food can get through, can get into the stomach, get partially digested, and then become regurgitated out because of that hernia. We can also see issues with belching due to that weakness of the lower esophageal sphincter. We can also see issues with dysphagia if this condition progresses to a more severe presentation. So dysphagia is where there's issues swallowing. So if a patient has dysphagia, they oftentimes feel that things get stuck or caught. We can also see nausea and vomiting with a hiatal hernia. And then we can also see chronic cough. This can be related to gastroesophageal reflux disease as well, since a lot of that acidic content can cause some irritation of the respiratory tract leading to a cough. So how do clinicians diagnose and treat a hiatal hernia? Hiatal hernia are diagnosed by endoscopy. So there can be clinical suspicion of a hiatal hernia, but the way to diagnose a hiatal hernia is through endoscopy. So they put a scope down and they can see where part of the stomach is bulging through the esophageal hiatus. And endoscopy also helps to rule out other pathologies as well, including some tumors and other strictures. We can also do a manometry to help rule out other conditions, including achalasia. And a hiatal hernia may also be diagnosed by certain imaging techniques, including a barium swallow. So once hiatal hernia is diagnosed, what are some ways to treat it? Lifestyle modification is important with patients who have a hiatal hernia. So instead of having a few larger meals, it's better to have several smaller size meals. So this prevents overeating and overfilling of the stomach, leading to more reflux and more regurgitation and other symptoms. So it's better to eat smaller portions several times per day. It's also important to avoid foods and beverages that trigger heartburn. So because the majority of signs and symptoms of a hiatal hernia are gastroesophageal reflux disease symptoms. We want to avoid foods and beverages that trigger heartburn, so foods and beverages that relax the lower esophageal sphincter or lead to more acidity in the stomach. And then it's also important to avoid lying down after eating, as gravity can allow the acidic gastric contents to come up into the esophagus easier. For medications, proton pump inhibitors or PPIs are important, so pentoprazole. So this helps reduce the acidity in the stomach, helping reduce a lot of those signs and symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease, and also reducing complications of GERD in the future. And then in severe cases of hiatal hernia, surgery is utilized, and there are a large list of surgeries that can be performed, but I won't get into detail here. And oftentimes these are performed in the other types of hiatal hernia, the less common types, so types 2, 3, and 4. So if you want to learn more about signs and symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease, please check my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.